This here is a tree that often you hear before you see it in the springtime. It's a little past its peak flowering season now, but when all the flowers are out, lime trees literally hum with a number of bees that crowd onto them. You can hear them from sometimes up to 50 metres away. The typical lime tree that you see in the British Isles is a hybrid between the small-leaved lime and the large-leaved lime. Actually, the parents of our common lime tree that's planted in gardens and around towns were probably from Europe rather than our natives. The small-leaved lime is now quite unusual, but it was formerly probably the most common tree in the whole of southeast England. Its wood was highly prized for coppicing, so people tended to value it in ancient woodlands where they, they would cut down the trees and then allow the shoots to grow up, and it's particularly useful for carving. It's easy to carve, you can bend it and it doesn't form splinters, and one of the uses for it that I've heard of more recently is that it's still used because it doesn't splinter so much for making Morris men sticks. Got to make them out of something, haven't you? So for Morris dancing, when you're holding a stick and you have to hit them against each other, apparently lime wood is particularly good because it's strong and it doesn't splinter. I'm not sure why it is that lime trees are particularly alluring to bees. It may be because there's just this enormous density of flowers on them and it may be that they produce a particularly large amount of nectar. Is this the kind of lime tree that will produce the lime fruit that I have in my gin and tonic? It has absolutely no connection whatsoever, whatsoever to lime the fruit. Um, it's a, a bit of a confusing name for the tree, but it's ended up being given the same one as, as lime, which is actually a relative of the orange. So no, this is useless for your co cocktails. This is where I might get in trouble with people, but I'm not too bothered about getting in trouble with people. So below the bark of limes, you'll notice here, the, the, this fibrous material here, this bust. And this is a protection for the tree, probably against browsers. So things like deer and squirrels that will take the bark off trees. Limes are quite tolerant of that because they've got this extra layer beneath the bark that protects them, called the bastwood. But the other thing about this bastwood is that if you strip some of it off and you roll it into a cigarette shape, you can smoke it and get a head rush off it. Uh, I'm not going to pretend it's pleasant. Um, it does affect you, and if you're bored in the forest, then I suppose it's something you can do to pass the time. But yes, you can get a legal high off a lime tree. If lime trees don't produce limes, what do we call the trees that give us limes? Lime trees? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is the problem with common names, which is different people call the same tree different things in different places in different countries, and the same name gets given to things in different ways. Sometime we should do a taxonomy series in which I explain why we have Latin names, and so botanists will tend to talk to each other in Latin, because this will always be um, called Tilia, well, times platyphylla, I think, because it's, it's, it's the hybrid. So it will always have a Latin name that is the same uh, wherever it grows. Whereas here it's called a lime tree, in Scandinavia it will be called a linda, or in Germany it's called lind. One of the reasons why it's worth learning to recognise lime trees is because it's one of those trees that you really don't want to park your car underneath. The reason being that it's usually covered with aphids. And aphids are very wasteful feeders. By feeding on trees, all they do is they stick their tube, their feeding tube, into a leaf and then suck out the plant's phloem, which is the transport tissue of plants, which is mostly just sugary goo. And what they want out of the phloem is the nitrogen, the proteins in it, and so they're limited in the amount of nitrogen they can get out of the phloem, which means that most of the sugar is entirely useless to them. They can't do anything with it, so they flick it out of their backsides. And this is why underneath lime trees you get this rain of sugary, sticky goo. So if you've ever parked under a lime tree and you've come back and found that your windscreen is covered in sticky spots, it's basically aphid pee from the tree. And because it's popular with aphids, it's also very popular with ladybirds. So we have a ladybird down here. In fact, there's ladybirds all over this tree, which 
are enjoying themselves by feeding on the aphids. So along with the bees, the hoverflies, the aphids, the ladybirds, this is a pretty good tree to spot insects on. There's lots happening around it.